Hey, so in this video, we're going to be deriving Maxwell's first equation, which tells us about how electric fields spread through space itself. So because we're looking at electric fields, let's, um, let's start off by considering a point charge, let's call it Q. And let's think about the flux of this field through um, a surface, so how much this field flows out through a surface. And the surface we'll be looking at is a sphere centered at that point charge, um, terribly drawn sphere. And we can call the flux through that surface by sphere. And that is, well, flux is just the double integral of the vector field we're looking at. So that's electric field uh, integrated over the closed surface, where ds is um, a little portion of our sphere um, directed straight out. So that's the vector ds. Well, first off, we know that e and ds point in the same direction because um, electric fields are radially symmetric by Coulomb's law. So we can turn this dot product into regular plain old scalar multiplication of E and DS. So the integral is less nasty now. Um, what we can also do is by um, Coulomb's law, we know that E only depends on um, the distance from the, set, the distance from the charge. So that's R. Um, and R is the same for all points in the sphere. So we can actually pull out E and rewrite it as Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared times the double integral of the S. Again, E is a constant um, at all points on the sphere. So now, now what we're left with is pretty easy because if we just integrate our DS over the entire sphere, we're left with nothing but 4 pi r squared. And that cancels with the denominator here. So what we're left with is the electric flux is just equal to the charge inside the field, uh, inside the surface, uh, divided by epsilon naught, which is a uh, natural constant for the permittivity of free space. So basically, it's a number that tells you how easy it is for an electric field to flow through something. So that makes sense if we work with a perfect spherical surface. But say we had uh, a much uglier surface. So say this weird, irregular pillow-shaped surface, and um, we, again, we can break this up into little pieces, um, like, and we'll call them the S dash. Um, and this entire surface is S dash. Um, each of these the S dashes, well, uh, firstly, let's see what the flux through the surface would look like. So the flux through this surface is by S dash. So that's again closed. Um, um, it's a closed surface, so that's why we have a circle over the integral sign of e dot with ds dash. So now we can't change this vector product, um, this uh, scalar product into a uh, regular multiplication because e and ds dash don't necessarily have to point in the same direction anymore. But what we can do is we know that every ds uh, can be projected onto ds dash. So say we had a ds here and that's projected onto ds dash. Um, and if ds is r away, ds dash is r dash away. And that just tells us we can use the inverse square law to relate ds to ds dash. In particular, we know that ds dash is equal to r dash over r, because it's an inverse law, inverse square law, we have to square it, times ds. Which makes sense, because ds dash is a scaled up bigger version of ds. This number is always greater than 1 um, as we move further away. But this equation is only true if we're, if we're dealing with two spheres, because if you think about it, if we have a ds, we can have its projection pointing in a very different orientation. So to say that's ds, we can have ds dash pointing this way, and the vector ds has been rotated, so these are vectors, and they've been rotated by this angle theta. So to fix that, we add a cos theta term here. And cause, we use cos because it tells you how much um, ds dash li lies along with ds, and cos theta uh, is put on this side just to make um, the values equal because this is a bigger number, cos theta will scale down this side of the equation a bit. So, using that, we can see that our flux phi s dash is now equal to the loop integral of, so a dot product can be written as the magnitude of e times the magnitude of ds times cos of the angle between them, which is also theta because e is parallel to ds. 
of this is meant to be the S dash. And this, well, we know that we know what this is from this side of the equation, and we know what this is from Coulomb's law. So let's plug both of that in. We get wrong color. We get the closed loop integral of so that's q over four pi epsilon naught r dash squared r dash because we're integrating over the bigger surface, and this side of the equation is now r dash over r squared ds things start to cancel out again that and that and what we're left with is the closed integral over of q 4 pi epsilon naught r squared ds and if you think about it this is exactly the same as the integral we had over here so what that tells us is um, this flux ex is exactly the same as the flux through the sphere. So the flux through any surface is exactly the same as the flux through the sphere. And we know that that is Q over epsilon naught. So what we've just shown is Gauss's law, which is um, uh, a law that says, it's sort of the integral form of what we're after. It's the integral form of Maxwell's first equation. So let's just write out the entire thing we've found so far. So we've we've just found that the flux through any surface is equal to the charge inside the surface um, di uh, divided by epsilon naught. Um, so we can convert this into Maxwell's first equation by considering divergence theorem. And the divergence theorem allows us to convert this closed surface integral into a volume integral. So we can now integrate over the volume enclosed by that surface of not E, but the divergence of E which is a number that tells us how E spreads the space um, integrated over the entire volume. And that's equal to, we can also rewrite Q in terms of a volume integral because Q is just a volume integral of charge density over that same volume, um, still divided by epsilon naught. So um, charge density is the same idea as mass density where um, it's charge per unit volume. So now, because this is through for any sur any closed surface, it's through for any volume enclosed in that surface. So we can what we can do now is equate integrands and say this is exactly the same as this, and that gives us Maxwell's first equation, which says the divergence of any electric field is always equal to the charge density at that point divided by epsilon naught, and that's Maxwell's first equation.